Hello YouTube, this is drawing here 1313 and welcome to something new that I'm going to be bringing to my channel. It is programming with drawing kid 1313. Uh, basically in this little series slash whatever you want to call it, I'm going to be uh, going through some different programs and just showing you how I think about things and uh, some of the basics of Dev C++ and C++ programming. Uh, so Dev C++ is a compiler for uh, the you know programming language C++ and uh, basically it makes it easier uh, to program. Uh, there's a few ways that you can do it like just doing like notepads and stuff like that and um, a whole bunch of different ways but this makes it easier because not only is it able to run the actual program but it can also debug it so it tells you if you made any um, you know very big mistakes so it's kind of just easier. So in this um, little part that we have here, we're going to be making a clock. Uh, just a simple clock that will count up seconds and minutes and hours. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> so pretty simple. Let's go ahead and start a new, a new program. Uh, I like to save all my stuff here. Let's go ahead and make the clock. Okay. So we're going to save that and we're going to start out with all this. Uh, now if you're using Dev C++ for the first time, you're not going to have uh, these four things right here, but you can add them in, uh, you know, yourself if you want. So when we're making a clock, there's three things that we need. There's uh, three variables that we're going to need throughout the program. This, uh, these are going to be integers. Okay. So for that, uh, this is how you declare different variables. So first off, you have to say what type of uh, variable it is. In this case, it's an integer. All right, an integer uh, value stores a whole number that can be positive or negative. So like 1, 2, 3, 10,000, 26, or it could be negative 50 or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say hour, and you can separate the different, um, what am I trying to say here? You can separate the different uh, um, variables with commas. So hour, minute, and let's do second. Okay, and then we're just going to put a uh, semicolon at the end of the line, signifying that or signaling that it's the end of the line. All right, so that's just kind of what you have to do. I don't know like the exact reason why you have to, but you know something like that. Now, for when we're just first starting out here, I'm going to make each like I'm just going to make it a standard time. Eventually, when we go to finish the program, we're going to allow the user to enter the time, and then it'll go ahead and do that, you know, however it wishes. So, but for now, we're just going to set hour equal to 12. Okay, so this is how you assign variables a certain number or a certain value, uh, just by saying the variable equals, and then put the number. And then, of course, the semicolon at the end of the line. So we're going to set minute equal to, <clears throat> I don't know, let's just choose like 7. And then let's go ahead and set the second equal to 30. All right, so... Now, if we go ahead and let's go ahead and just output our information that we have right now. It's not going to be really functioning, but, you know, whatever. So we're going to see out hour. This is how you output information to the console, which is, you know, what's going to be, you know, that's where everything is going to be. So right now we're just going to output hour. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. We have to name our CPP file uh, clock. And now it'll output 12. And then this little press any key to continue, that's just this right here. It waits for user input, and then it'll move on to the next thing. So return exit success. Uh, I'm going to, at the end, like right before this uh, outputs, I'm going to see out and just tell it to go to an end line. All right, so this starts a new in the console when you have that. Sorry, I accidentally pressed a button, and I believe I paused the recording. Now let's go ahead and run it, and now let's see what it outputs. Okay, 12, and then it says press any key to continue. So now we want it to kind of output like a clock, all right? So let's go ahead and just do an example right here. If you want to just put in a note in your code, all you have to do is two forward slashes, and you can notice that you can type whatever. It'll be slightly different font as opposed to just doing this. And basically when the compiler is running through the code, it'll ignore what is ever, whatever is after these two um, slashes. <clears throat> so... Let's say uh, we want our hours to output like this. We want our hour, and then we want a semicolon, 
and then we want our minute, and then we want another semicolon, and then we want our second, okay? So that's pretty much the way that we want to format this, so we kind of have to do it manually in a way. So after hour, we're going to output something that's not a variable, but we're just inputting it at anyway. If you ever Im output anything that's like not a certain variable, doesn't have a certain value, you're just outputting like a plain text, you go ahead and put it into quotes, and that'll output whatever is inside those quotes. And then we're going to do that. And basically this right here <coughs> just separates the different things that it's going to output. So it's going to output a variable, and then we're going to tell it, okay, you output that variable, now move on to this little semicolon. Now we want to output the minute, so just do that, another little double arrow to the left thingy, and then we go ahead and do another one of these, because we want the seconds to be after this, another arrow, and then let's do second. Okay, so now if we go ahead and run this, oh, that's compiling. Okay, now if we go ahead and run this, it's going to output everything, just like we want. Alright, cool. But there's one little thing that really bugs me. When you when you see a clock and something's um and something's like less than ten, all right, it's going to output a zero in front of it, right? So let's say that it was uh, twelve uh, oh seven, just like we have in this example. The way that I want it to output is so that it's oh seven, all right, and then you know the seconds should just be thirty. <clears throat> so it's pretty simple. We just tell it to output a zero right here. All right, pretty simple, right? Let's go ahead and uh, run this. 12, 07, 30, perfect. Now that would work, however, what if our minutes was not less than 10? Let's say what, if they were 12. So let's go ahead and make it 12 and then do that. And this will go, oh, well, that's not exactly what we want to happen. So here's where we have a convenient little if statement, all right? So basically, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say if, all right, so that's how you start an if statement, and inside these parentheses, what you're going to have is whatever you're testing. It's pretty much testing a condition, and if the condition is true, then it'll continue with the if statement. If not, well, we'll move on to that later. So basically, what we want to happen is if the minute is, well, actually, let's make this kind of our default, all right? Let's make this our default. So let's say, you know, everything's less than zero, all right? Everything's less than zero, so let's say minutes is less than zero. And so we have to do these little ampersands right there, but we have to do double ones. I don't know why you have to do double, but you do. Don't argue with it. That's just the way it is. And second is less than 10. There we go, less than 10. It'll continue on and output it in this fashion. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and set our minutes less than 10. Um, actually, no. We want this to be greater than 10. Alright, because this is our little default saying that everything greater than 10, just output it without any modifications or anything. So let's just go ahead and do, uh, let's stick with uh, 13, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and run this. And it should output in the way that we want because this, uh, the way that we had our variables assigned, match, um, you know, this condition right here because minutes greater than 10 and seconds are greater than 10. So let's go ahead and make another if statement and say if, let's say just the minute, or you know what, let's do everything is less than zero. So let's see, if minute is less than zero and second is less than 10, and by zero I mean 10, same with here, I don't know why I didn't catch the one that I typed. Uh, so if minute is less than 10 and seconds is less than 10, that means that we want an, uh, a zero right after all the uh, little C out statements that we have. Okay, so we're going to say uh, C out, C out, hour, okay, that little uh, semi or colon, and then we want a zero after that, and then we want to output our minute, minute, and then we want another semicolon followed by a zero because both of these are less than 10, so we're going to want a zero in front of them. Now let's do second. 
Okay? So now let's say that both of our seconds and minutes is less than 10. What we can do now, let's go ahead and just test that by setting it equal to 2 and this equal to 3. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go, look. Since this condition was met, this is how it outputted with zeros after the semicolons. Cool, right? Alright, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add in another condition and go if, let's say that only the minute is less than 10. Minute is less than 10. And we want to add in an and and say that second is greater than 10 or greater than 9. Yeah, when I do greater than, it should be greater than 9. Greater than 9. Because uh, this would actually exclude 10, so if it was 10, nothing would happen, and it would probably just quit out. Um, because this is, you know, not inclusive, so greater, greater than 9 does not include 9, just everything after 9. So there we go. Little mistake by me. So basically we want minute, only minute is less than 10. So that's why we have to say and second is greater than 9, because that's what we're testing for everywhere else. So now we're going to see out hour, and then we're going to do this little thing. We want a zero after, or we want a zero before minute because the minute is the one that's less than ten. And then see out minute, and then see out just a regular colon because second is still greater than nine. And then let's see out second. All right, now I'm going to continue going on in this fashion. Minute. Uh, this is going to be that minute is greater than 9, and second is less than 10. So this is saying that only seconds is less than 10. Alright, and then we can go ahead and see out our... Uh, we don't want a zero after that. Um, and then we're going to fix our mistake there, and then go minute, and then zero. All right, cool. Because we want a zero before the seconds outputs, because that's the one that's less than ten. And then we want to output our second, of course. Second. There we go. Okay. So that's cool. Now we should pretty much have anything you know that we want. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this stuff. It doesn't really matter that it's there, but it matters to me. Let's just go ahead and copy this a few times. All right. That way we can test each one. All right. So this is going to be if both of them are greater than nine. Let's go ahead and just set this to 23 and this to like 52. And then let's go ahead and set this one to this is them both less than 10. And uh, yeah, okay, this is how I want to do it. It doesn't really make sense, but you know. Alright, so this is the minute is less than 10, and then the second is over 10, and then this is the minute is less than, no, the minute is, you know, usual, and then, oh, look, Mr. Quick is playing Call of Duty, and uh, the second is less than 10. Alright, so there we go. Let's go ahead and run this, see how we did, and uh, let's go ahead and get an end line after that. And uh, I didn't mean to cut that, I meant to copy it. Alright, so let's go ahead and try running that again. Now everything should be on its separate line. Alright, so there we go, everything looks perfect. There we go, so that was everything greater, everything less, only minutes are less, and only seconds are less. I think that's all the possible outcomes of this. Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, um, we really can just get rid of this stuff, and get rid of that stuff, and there we go. So that's cool, we now have it to where it can output in a way that, uh, you know, pleases us. Um, but now we need a way for it to count up. What can we possibly do for that? Um, because, you know, it's not, it's just outputting one number. It's not, you know, the clock isn't functioning. It's not moving. So uh, we're going to have to fix that, aren't we? But we're going to have to fix that in the next part because it's around the 15 minute mark. Actually, 3, 2, 1.
there we go, just hit the 15 minute mark, and uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, just something a little bit different than what I u normally do, uh, go ahead and tell me if this has helped you, if you want to continue seeing these, if you enjoyed it, uh, if I missed anything, if you want me to clarify anything, any question that you may have, go ahead and leave it in the comment section, and uh, I'll be sure to answer. So, this has been Drawing Kid 1313 with some uh, C++ programming. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you join me next time. Until then, I will see you.